Hey guys, back in the set here, back in the saddle, talking about basic electrical stuff you need to know when you pick up one of these coaches, all right? From uh, episode two, this is episode three. Episode two, we talked about charging, how to charge the system, right? Now, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about making sure all the main systems work. We talked before that the headlight circuit is on its own, uh, has no fuses in it. It has its own circuit. It does not go through the glove box. So let's start there. Turn your headlights on. First notch. What you should have on the first notch is, I know this sounds real basic and everything, but your clearance lights. Go out and walk around the coach and see what works. You should have five top clearance lights. You should have two front clearance lights. You should have two side clearance lights. Then you should have, again, five across the top, <clears throat> two on the side, and then two in the back. Right? We want to make sure they all work. Now, what are we fighting if it doesn't work? We're fighting corrosion. We're fighting water, rust, years of being there, old, old uh, uh, bulbs. When we were at uh, Bessemer, we did a uh, walk around test and we found that uh, one of the uh, bulbs uh, was out. It was, it was actually intermittent. What it was doing was going down the road, it would, uh, one of the turn signal uh, lights would come on, then it would go off, come on, go off. The system is set up that if you have a bad bulb, it will tell you that it has a bad bulb by that circuit coming on. So it was coming on. We checked all of them. We found one that was bad. Pulled the lens off. Went to pull the socket out. The whole bulb came out. The whole bulb came out of its own socket. So then we had to get in there and dig. And then while we're digging, the whole socket blew apart. <laughs> it was fortunate that, uh, that uh, Mark had one. We changed that whole assembly. Why? Because <laughs> that one little light said that we had one bad bulb. So go through and check all your parking lights. See what we've got. You may need to wiggle things. You may want to take some tuner cleaner, spray in there, get a little bit of corrosion, get all that stuff out. <clears throat> now turn on your headlights. The speedometer gauge, at the top of the speedometer gauge will be a blue light if your headlights are in high beam, right? Now, how do you get to high beam? You young guys, this may be new to you. <laughs> There's a round pedal on the floor on the left side, a round pedal, that's your high beam. Now, you don't pull the turn signal, you don't, you know, you push that with your left foot, boom, boom. Those do go out. If you push it and it jams or your headlights are on and won't go to high beam or, or whatever, play with that switch a little bit. If it does work but it's intermittent, you can get a new one. Go down to most any auto parts store, take it out, it's plugged in. Take it out, go into the guy, lay that out there. I know Napa can do it. They can eyeball that and tell you exactly what it is. It's off of a 76 Tornado. It's the headlight dimmer switch. Uh, so if that's bad, headlight bulbs, there's three wires on the back. They get a lot of corrosion. They're right up front. They get water all over them. You may need to take that socket and work it in and out, in and out, to get it to be reliable. Uh, again, what we're fighting is years of corrosion, rust, um, goop and pucky, and all kinds of nasty stuff. So get all your lights going. In your fuse box, in the glove box, take a look there. On one side of it, on everything 76 and back, it'll be at the top. The very top, there's a silver box plugged into the fuse box. On 77 and 78, the, glove bo the, the fuse box is turned sideways, so it'll be on the left side. But that is a resettable circuit breaker for your... Uh, rear suspension air ride okay <clears throat> right there is when we were talking about this uh the fusible link right in here to have a 40 amp fuse work on this thing you take 
the air system off of the fusible link. So that top fuse right there, we're going to do away with that top fuse. And we're going to pull power from another source. Okay? That top fuse, you can put a 20 amp fuse in it because in the future, we're going to have a... Uh, uh, it will only run the electrical part, the switching part of the uh, electrical level system. Um, to get it home, put this in there, this uh, fuse link. To get it home, you could put a 40 amp fuse in there, have some extra fuses. Don't turn on your air conditioner because the air conditioner is the is the second highest, well third. But it's uh, the second highest while you're driving down the road. If you do not use the air conditioner, you will not ever have a problem with this. Okay? So, or you get a bunch of these and have them in the glove box. I don't know where to get them. All right. Headlights. We have headlights. Do you have turn signals? In other words, check all of your lights. Because you, that's got to get you home. Again, our prime directive is to get home. Check your lights. All right. Next thing to down. We've got all of this hooked up. Again, we are still not talking to this thing over here at all. We are not talking to our um, our living area electrical system at all. All we're talking to right now is your engine <coughs> electrical system. Air ride. If you lose air pressure, you really are pretty much done. You should not drive. Why? Because <clears throat> when the back of the coach goes down, the, the tires get very, very close to the wheel liners. Uh, in 73s and 74s, they actually crack the wheel liners. Mine have cracks all over them because of that. Uh, 75 and on, you'll see a little cutout. It still will go down on the tire. Now, if you have any tire bigger than a 225, 75, 16, uh, you will crack the liners. Absolutely. So, air is a critical mission, critical system. <clears throat> and when you're going to get your motor home, as a mission critical system, you do not want to rely on the air ride delivery system in that coach until you've checked it out you don't even want to you don't even want to use it okay <clears throat> that sounds awful rough but here's the reason you don't know what this machine is you say well it's had good maintenance and all this stuff uh, but if something goes out you have you are relying on their integrity you need to rely on your own. <clears throat> you need to rely on what you have in front of you, what you can see, because that's your assets. Until you go through that system, you completely cycle it, and you look at the age of the compressor, the fittings, all that kind of stuff. To get it home, I would not use the air ride system. I just wouldn't use it. Um, if it fails, you're done. What do you want to do? You want to shut it off. You want to have a, a shutoff valve right at the airbag. There's a lot of different ones over the years that are available. Uh, I'll show you one on the next video. You want to shut off that airbag, isolate it, and pump it up right there. Now, if the system works, well, then wonderful. Pump the thing up and shut it off. Because if something happens to that thing while you're driving, you're hooped. There's no backup. Well, actually, you need to have a backup. You need to have a second compressor, a portable air compressor, that you can put air in that bag and get home. By the way, make sure that the, the, the power cord that, can, that runs the compressor <clears throat> is long enough to get to your uh, cigarette lighter. <laughs> I had a guy one time had everything he needed, did not have enough wire to get his compressor plugged in. So be sure you have that. You need an extra compressor because you need a backup on this mission critical system. And until you know the system, you want to get it up to where you want it to be and you want to shut it off. Now, where do you want it to be?
I did a video about this, about the adjustable air ride system and the lower you drop the back until you throw sparks, the better straight ahead you have, the higher you drop, you bring the back up, the tighter it turns in town. And I explained about that. All right. <coughs> but we don't want to rely on that adjustable air ride system until we know it more. All right. We want to lock it off. All right. Are we driving a long distance? If we're going to drive a short distance, if it's 50 miles or something like that, <clears throat> then bring the body side molding level. Stand right next to it at the front, right next to the front wheel, and mark the top of the body side molding on your waist. Then walk to the back. Stand between the two back wheels and look where the body molding is. For proper ride height, for distance running, the back should be an inch and a half to two inches lower measurement at the top of the body molding than it was next to the front wheels. In other words, the back of the coach is going to be like this a little bit. That will give you better caster and better straight ahead. If you're going a short distance and you're worried about uh, speed bumps and swales, then jack, then put air in the coach until the body is level or maybe even a little bit higher. Because what that does, <clears throat> it does this. And now you can turn tight in town. And the back is safe if you're going to hit any uh, speed bumps or anything like that. But you don't want to go over about 45 miles an hour with it in this position. Over 45, you need the back in the low position. And in that we are not going to be using the adjustable, okay, you might want to set it at right height to make it easier to drive. You get used to driving at right height. And then be careful when you go to swales and off curves and things like that until you get home, until you can actually pump this thing up and rely that it'll pump up and stay up and it will go back down. Does that make sense? Also, that air compressor is uh, at least a third of the drain of the electrical system. And on the uh, on this fusible link, <clears throat> you're taking a lot of pressure off of this by not running the uh, air ride system. Make sense? Again, our prime directive is to get home. Rear suspension, very important. If you, if your original air ride system fails, you need a backup. And if that fails, you need another backup because again, you do not want to break down and not have a way to lift the back of your coach up. Another way to uh, have a second backup, real simple, a 14 inch, 14 and a half inch long four by four with a lag bolt and a washer on each end. Take your jacks, you jack it up, take the airbag out, put that in there, and don't hit a bump. <laughs> don't hit a bump. But you need a way to move. Okay? So that's that's how important that air ride system is. All right, guys, well, look. Another, another part of this uh, series, what to do to get it home. All right? Thanks for your uh, comments. Give me some more. Uh, comments yesterday made today's video much better uh, and uh, the next day we'll see you tomorrow